Cozy Fantat, although it is commonly held that was written and composed at the suggestion of the Emperor Joseph II, recent research does not support this idea. There is evidence that Mozart's contemporary Antonio Solieri tried to set the libretto but left it unfinished. In 1994, John Rice uncovered Tutorzetti by Salyer in the Austrian National Library. The short title, Cozy Fantat, literally means so do they all, using the feminine plural, tut, to indicate women. It is usually translated into English as women are like that. The words are sung by the three men in Act 2, Scene 13, just before the finale. This melodic phrase is also quoted in the overture to the opera. De Ponte had used the line Cozy Fantut La Belle earlier in La Nozze di Figaro, in Act 1, Scene 7. The first performance of Mozart's setting took place at the Berg Theater in Vienna on January 26, 1790. It was given only five times before the run was stopped by the death of the Emperor Joseph II in the resulting period of court mourning. It was performed twice in June 1790 with the composer conducting the second performance, and again in July, twice, and August, once. After that it was not performed in Vienna during Mozart's lifetime. The first British performance was in May 1811 at the King's Theatre, London. Cozy Fantat was not performed in the U.S. until 1922, when it was given at the Metropolitan Opera. According to William Mann, Mozart disliked prima donna Adriana Ferraris del Beni, de Ponte's arrogant mistress for whom the role of Fiordi Ligi had been created. Knowing her idiosyncratic tendency to drop her chin on low notes and throw back her head on high ones, Mozart filled her showpiece aria cum scaglio with constant leaps from low to high and high to low in order to make Ferrarese's head bob like a chicken on stage. The subject matter, see synopsis below, did not offend Viennese sensibilities of the time, but in the 19th and early 20th centuries was considered risque, vulgar, and even immoral. The opera was rarely performed, and when it did appear it was presented in one of several bundlerized versions. After World War II it regained a place in the standard operatic repertoire and is now frequently performed. While the use of modern fact titles and voice categories for these roles has become customary, Mozart was far more general in his own descriptions of the voice types, Fiordi Ligi Soprano, Dorabella Soprano, Guglielmo Bass, Ferrando, Tenor, Despina Soprano, and Don Alfonso Bass. Occasionally these modern voice types are varied in performance practice. Don Alfonso is frequently performed by baritones such as Thomas Allen and Bosco and Dorabella is almost always performed by a mezzo-soprano. In the ensembles, Guglielmo's music lies lower than Alfonso's, and accordingly has been performed by basses such as James Morris and Vladimiro Gonzaroli, and Despina is occasionally, though far less often than the other three instances cited here, performed by a mezzo, such as Cecilia Bartoli, Frederica von Stade, Agnes Baltza, and Anne Murray. Forando and Fiordi Ligi, however, can only be sung by a tenor and a soprano because of the high tessit era of their roles. The instrumentation is as follows. Mozart and De Ponte use the theme of fiancé swapping, which dates back to the 13th century. Notable earlier versions are found in Boccaccio's Decameron and Shakespeare's play Cymbeline. Elements from Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew are also present. Furthermore, it incorporates elements off myth of Procorus as found in Ovid's Metamorphoses. 7. Scene 1, A Coffee House. In a cafe, Ferrando and Guglielmo, two officers, express certainty that their fiancés, Dorabella and Fiordi Ligi, respectively, will be eternally faithful. Don Alfonso expresses skepticism and claims that there is no such thing as a faithful woman. He lays a wager with the two officers, claiming he can prove in a day's time that those two, like all women, are fickle. The wager is accepted. The two officers will pretend to have been called off to war, soon thereafter they will return in disguise and each attempt to seduce the other's lover. The scene shifts to the two women, who are praising their men, Duet, a guarda sorella, Alec's sister. Alfonso arrives to announce the bad news, the officers have been called off to war. Ferrando and Guglielmo arrive, broken-hearted, and bid farewell, Quintet, Sento, Odio, J. Questo Biede e Restio, I feel, O oh God that my foot is reluctant. As the boat with the men sails off to sea, Alfonso and the sisters wish them safe travel, trio, so abe sia il vento, may the wind be gentle. Alfonso, left alone, gloatingly predicts that the women like all women, will prove unfaithful, arioso, oh, poverini, for fermina gia care santo zucchini? Oh, poor little ones, to wager 100 sequins on a woman.
Scene 2, a room in the sister's home. Despina, the maid, arrives and asks what is wrong. Dorobella bemoans the torment of having been left alone. Aria, smania implacabile, torments implacable. Despina mocks the sisters, advising them to take new lovers while their betrothed are away. Aria, in womini, in soldati, sperare fedelta? In men, in soldiers, you hope for faithfulness? After they leave, Alfonso arrives. He fears Despina will recognize the men through their disguises, so he bribes her into helping him to win the bet. The two men then arrive, dressed as mustachioed Albanians, sextet, a la bella Despinetta, meet the pretty Despinetta. The sisters enter and are alarmed by the presence of strange men in their home. The Albanians tell the sisters that they were led by love to them, the sisters. However, the sisters refuse to give in. Fiordi Ligi asks the Albanians to leave and pledges to remain faithful, Aria, come scaglio, like a rock. The Albanians continue the attempt to win over the sisters' hearts, Guglielmo going so far as to point out all of his manly attributes, Aria, nonciate retrosi, don't be shy, but to no avail. Ferrando, left alone and sensing victory, praises his love, Aria, Unaura amorosa, a loving breath. Scene 3 a garden. The sisters are still pining. Despina has asked Don Alfonso to let her take over the seduction plan. Suddenly, the Albanians burst in the scene and threaten to poison themselves if they are not allowed the chance to woo the sisters. As Alfonso tries to calm them, they drink the poison and pretend to pass out. Soon thereafter, a doctor, Despina in disguise, arrives on the scene and, using magnet therapy, is able to revive the Albanians. The men, pretending to hallucinate, demand a kiss from Dorabella and Fiordi Ligi, whom the Albanians call goddesses, who stand before them. The sisters refuse, even as Alfonso and the doctor, Despina, urge them to acquiesce. Scene 1, The Sisters' Bedroom Despina urges them to succumb to the Albanians' overtures, Aria, Unadonna Equindicieni, a 15-year-old woman. After she leaves, Dorabella confesses to Fiordi Ligi that she is tempted and the two agree that a mere flirtation will do no harm and will help them pass the time while they wait for their lovers to return, duet, prendero cal brunatino, I will take the dark one. Scene 2, The Garden, Dorabella and the disguised Guglielmo pair off, as do the other two. The conversation is haltingly uncomfortable, and Ferrando departs with Fiordi Ligi. Now alone, Guglielmo attempts to woo Dorabella. She does not resist strongly, and soon she has given him a medallion with Ferrando's portrait inside, in exchange for a heart-shaped locket, duet, il corvidono, I give you my heart. Ferrando is less successful with Fiordi Ligi, Ferrando's aria, ah, lo veggio, ah, I see it in Fiordi Ligi's aria, per pieta, ben mio, perdona, please, my beloved, forgive, so he is enraged when he later finds out from Guglielmo that the medallion with his portrait has been so quickly given away to a new lover. Guglielmo at first sympathizes with Ferrando, Aria, Dunmia, La Feta Tandy, my ladies, you do it to so many, but then gloats, because his betrothed is faithful. Scene 3, The Sisters' Room, Dorabella admits her indiscretion to Fiordi Ligi, e amore un ladroncello, love is a little thief. Fiordi Ligi, upset by this development, decides to go to the army and find her betrothed. Before she can leave, though, Ferrando arrives and continues his attempted seduction. Fiordi Ligi finally succumbs and falls into his arms, duet, Fra Leon Plessy, in the embraces. Guglielmo is distraught while Ferrando turns Guglielmo's earlier gloating back on him. Alfonso, winner of the wager, tells the men to forgive their fiancés. After all, cozy fan tut, all women are like that. Scene 4 The scene begins as a double wedding for the sisters and their Albanian grooms. Despina in disguise as a notary, presents the marriage contract, which all sign. Directly thereafter, military music is heard in the distance, indicating the return of the officers. Alfonso confirms the sisters' fears, Ferrando and Guglielmo are on their way to the house. The Albanians hurry off to hide, actually, to change out of their disguises. They return as the officers, professing their love. Alfonso drops the marriage contract in front of the officers, and, when they read it, they become enraged. They then depart and return moments later, half in Albanian disguise, half as officers. Despina has been revealed to be the notary, and the sisters realize they have been duped. All is ultimately forgiven, as the entire group praises the ability to accept life's unavoidable good times and bad times.
Facts, notes, sources, other sources. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.